today a response to two questions which are related. One of them was, why is it so hard to be a Christian? And the other question was about addictions. How as Christians do we handle addiction? These two are related because one of the things that makes it so hard to be a Christian is dealing with habitual sin. This is what the ancient Christian fathers call the passions. The word passion has the same root as the word passive. So the passions are these sinful patterns that we get into, and we don't even really put up a fight, even when we know that they are unhealthy, toxic, even when we know how much they mess up our lives and they hurt the people around us, but we just walk into them without even putting up a fight. These are the passions, and this is also a good definition for an addiction. Addictions are these things that we turn to for comfort, for strength, for consolation. And at first, they work pretty well. But the more that we turn to them, the more dependent we become on them, the less effective they are. And before we know it, the very thing that we hoped would be a solution in our lives becomes our greatest problem. Recovery from addiction and rooting out habitual sin, and again, that's really two sides of the same coin, is a very difficult journey. It is the essence of the journey of repentance. And the great difficulty with them is that they require a lot of honesty, admitting that these things that we thought would be solutions in our lives have become problems. We don't like to admit that. We like to think that we're in control, that we're okay, that it's somebody else's problem. If the situation was better, then everything would be fine. It is so hard to be a Christian, and it is so hard to recover from addictions because the first step is admitting how weak we are, how broken we are. Then having admitted that, taking the first steps in our healing, this is also difficult because the first steps are in acknowledging the depth of the problem, acknowledging how deeply we hurt ourselves and other people with our habitual sin and how dependent we've become on these addictions, the passions. That is a lot of truth to face about ourselves. And most people will get to the threshold, but step back before they walk through the door. But if we can muster that kind of resolve and courage to acknowledge the exact nature of our sins, the depth of our dependency on toxic ways of thinking and behaving, acknowledge how deeply the passions have gripped our lives. If we can do this, then we are ready to take the next step, which is to turn to God and ask for his mercy and open our hearts to that and let him come in and root out all of this poison that is deep within us. But that's tough as well, because once these things get rooted out, they come to the surface, and then we have to acknowledge them and we have to deal with them. And again, we shy away from this. But it's the only way that we can truly be set free. Remember, the truth sets us free. And part of that truth is the depth to which we have sunk, depending on life-taking behaviors and patterns, obsessions, compulsions, and addictions, to take our pain and our shame and our loneliness away. Then acknowledging these things, we need to cultivate healthier patterns of behaving and coping and turning to the right things, life-giving things, to help us through the struggles of life. We learn to pray, to pray regularly, to pray ceaselessly. We learn to let go of negative thoughts as quickly as they floated into our heads. And we allow the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, to set the pace for our life, relinquishing our illusions of control and turning to God on a regular basis and saying, Lord, give me what I need, and in all things, may your will be done. But the old nature wants to assert itself all the time. Remember, they're habitual sins, and habits are hard to shake, and every now and then they're going to come back, and we're going to fall into them again. And at that point, we do not allow ourselves to stay down. We look up, and again we say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And as often as we fall down, the saints say, 
we get up again and we keep pressing forward to the kingdom, trusting Christ and his grace, a grace that he will never stop offering us. And this is how we go through our days. We fall down and we get up again and we fall down and get up again and we fall down and we get up again and we keep pressing forward. And slowly, those habitual sins begin to release. And by the grace of God, we begin to see real freedom. He leads us to wholeness. He leads us to holiness. But it's not for nothing that St. Paul calls the Christian life running the good race and fighting the good fight. Being a Christian is hard. Yes, it takes effort. There's no autopilot. And once we stop pressing forward, we are already gliding backwards. But we don't journey alone. We have the saints and the angels encouraging us, lifting up prayers for us. And we have the church, our brothers and sisters in the faith, fighting their own battles and struggling uphill with us. We have Christ calling us home. The path to the kingdom, Jesus says, is narrow and it's difficult. But we journey to the place that is our true home. And by the grace of God, we discover a way of being human that was made for us in the beginning. Life in all of its fullness, in communion with the one who made us, the one who sustains our lives, and the one who makes us holy, little by little, step by step, and day by day.